From Hollywood, it's time now for... Johnny Dollar. Johnny, I've been trying to reach you for two days. Who's that? George Reed. Oh, well, I took off a couple of days, George. What's on your mind? A riddle. Riddle? Yeah, and a blonde photographer's model. That's better. How are you with riddles, Johnny? Not as good as I am with... But go ahead, try me. All right. A year ago, this model married Webster Preen. Preen Hat Company? Was Preen Hat Company. He sold it when he retired. Come on. Well, last week, Preen reported his wife had disappeared. And according to him, when she left home, she didn't bother taking any of her clothes or car or jewelry. And she forgot to tell her friends she was leaving? Right. Not even him. You think Preen told the truth? Johnny, that's the riddle. <laughs> Bob Bailey in the exciting adventures of the man with the action-packed expense account, America's fabulous freelance insurance investigator, yours truly, Johnny Dollar. (laughs) Expense account submitted by Special Investigator Johnny Dollar. To Floyd's of England, American Branch Office, 443 North 15th Street, Hartford, Connecticut. The following is an account of expenses incurred during my investigation of the Mad Hatter matter. Expense account item one, 85 cents, cab fare from my apartment at George Reed's office. He was seated behind his desk, his lily-white nose buried in a copy of Playmate magazine. He didn't look up until I was halfway across the room. Hmm? Oh, Johnny, come in. Hiya, George. What you reading? I, uh, I was just taking a look at Bridget Randall. Or Mrs. Preen, I suppose I should call her. Yeah, let's see. Yeah. Mmm. Very nice. She, uh, look familiar to you? Oh, George, you're flattering me. No, really. She should. Oh, why? Well, up until she married Preen, she was a very popular model. Figures. Is that a pun? <laughs> Anyhow, her picture was in everything from the police gazette to the ladies' home journal. And after she married him? She retired. Hey, this is a new magazine, George, this month's issue. Well, the picture must have been taken before she was married. Hmm. Well, what do you know about Preen? Not too much. He's over twice her age and, from all reports, has a lot of money. I bet on it. Their marriage caused quite a stir. You know, real winter and spring stuff. The newspapers played it up big. Where were they married? New York. She'd done some ad work for Preen's hat company... He liked her look. And she liked his bankroll. Cynical, aren't you? Yeah. Anyway, since then, they've been living at his place near Los Angeles. Here's the address. All right, thanks. I called Mr. Preen long distance day before yesterday. He knows you're coming out. What about the police, George? You know who's handling their end of it? According to Preen, it's a man named Steiner, detective lieutenant. I got the feeling Preen doesn't much care for Steiner. George, how much life insurance does he carry on his wife? None. None? Nope. Or if he does, it's not with us. Then would you mind explaining why you sent for me? Not at all. We're not interested in her life. Obviously. That's a pretty callous attitude. Let me finish. We're not interested in her life, but we are in her face. In her what? The fine print reads from a point two inches below her chin to the hairline. Come on, break it down, George. Of course. Last year, a couple of months before she married Preen, she took out a special coverage policy in case something happened to her face that would finish her modeling career. You know, like a permanent scar, bad burn, anything like that. Uh Uh-huh. She received quite a bit of publicity at the time, and it didn't exactly hurt us either. When does this uh, policy lapse? Well, that's why we're so concerned, Johnny. When she married Preen, she announced that she had given up modeling for good. So we quite naturally thought she wouldn't renew the policy. But she did. Yes. And just ten days before she disappeared. How much did you people bet that she wouldn't ruin her face? The amount she earned year before last. $25,000. Expense account item two eighty five cents cab fare back to my apartment. On the way, I had the cabbie stop at a newsstand where I spent half a dollar of my hard-earned cash for a copy of Playmate magazine. Yeah, there was no doubt about it. Mrs. Webster Preen was the kind of woman any red-blooded American boy over 30 would be eager to locate. Item three, $190 plane fare, Hartford to Los Angeles, then a cab to the Statler Hotel. I checked in, made arrangements to rent a car, then put in a call to police headquarters. Lieutenant Steiner was out, so I left word for him to call me. Had lunch, and then drove out to the San Fernando Valley. The Preen home was one of those Spanish stucco and adobe jobs. Two stories, probably 30, 40 years old. It sat in the middle of some two acres of orange trees, with a plaster wall around all the property, separating it from the subdivision on one side and a main thoroughfare on the other. 
I walked up to the front door and rang the bell. In a moment, it was opened by a beautiful blonde. If she hadn't been wearing a nurse's uniform, I might have mistaken her for Bridget Preen. Yes? Afternoon. Is Mr. Preen in? Do you have an appointment, Mr. Dollar. Johnny Dollar. No, I don't have an appointment, but I'm sure he'll see me. Really? Yes, really. I'm investigating his wife's disappearance. You're from the police? No, insurance investigator. I see. I'm sorry, Mr. Dollar, but Mr. Preen can't possibly see you. You're uh, sure of that, Miss... Uh... Richard, and I am sure. Mr. Preen has suffered a severe shock. The doctor left strict orders that he's not to be disturbed unnecessarily. And you feel qualified to say what is necessary and what isn't? I've been with him for nearly five years. Well, answer me this, Miss Richards. Do you think Mr. Preen's health would improve if somebody happened to find his wife? What? I... I, I mean, they haven't found her, have they? You haven't answered my question. You want my honest opinion, Mr. Dollar? Helen, who is it? Who's out there with you? Excuse me. No one important. It's Johnny Dollar, Mr. Breen. Now, just a minute. Mr. Dollar, will you come in? Come in. Have him come to the orchid room, Helen. Yes, sir. Well, I hope you enjoy steam baths, Mr. Dollar. Steam bath? What do you mean? Follow me. You'll find out. A pretty girl, in spite of her abrupt manner. And there was a lot going on behind those clear blue eyes. She led me into the house through a couple of large rooms, then up a winding staircase and down the hall to a door at the end of it. Miss Preen's waiting for you in there, Johnny. Thanks. Ouch! Hey, that doorknob's hot as... Oh, very funny. I warned you. Here, like this. Come here, Mr. Dollar. Hurry. I'll see you later, Johnny. Close the door. Close it. I, I don't want it to cool off in here. Well... You look surprised. Well, I, I didn't expect to meet you in a hothouse, Mr. Breen. Well, I'm sorry if you're uncomfortable, but orchids must have plenty of heat and moisture. Now, me, I love it. I, I, I didn't used to, but since I've... Well, since I am at the age where a man is nothing but stick and dried parchment, I, if you can take off your jacket if you like, Mr. Dollar. Mm, thanks. Do you know anything about orchids? Well, only that they're expensive. Aren't all beautiful things? Sit down, sir. Any place that's clean. We can talk while I do this. You know what I'm doing. I haven't the least idea. What the bees would normally do, that is, if these plants were in their native environment. Uh, pollination? Yes, sir. Would you mind handing me those tweezers? Yes. Yes. Thank you. Mm. Hey, how many plants do you have here? More than 200, Mr. Dollar. 36 different varieties. Oh, beautiful. Oh, yes. Lovely, delicate creatures. Mr. Dollar, do you think you'd be able to find her? Well, I'm going to try. I'd appreciate it. I have so very few things left these days. Uh, did you notice the orange trees when you drove in? Well, yes. When I bought this house, the land on both sides was nothing but orange groves. Beautiful orange trees. Green, growing things as far as the eye could see. And now it's a housing project. Yes, well, Mr. Preen, I understand you aren't entirely satisfied with the efforts the police are making to find your wife. And you understand correctly. They have done nothing but ask me the same asinine questions over and over again. Have you talked to them? No, sir. I felt that I should see you first. Get all the information you have. I will cooperate with you all the way, Mr. Dollar. All right. When exactly did she disappear? Just, just ten days ago. She'd come down from our place up at Lake Arrowhead, where she'd spent Saturday and Sunday. Uh-huh. We had planned on going up together that weekend, but I developed a cold. Oh. The evening she returned, I retired earlier than usual, and then when I awoke about 11.30 that night, she wasn't in her room. I called to her, searched the ground, then waited up. But she never came home. I see. Was anyone else in the building that evening? No. We were alone. Rather... I was. Any sign of a injury to her face, uh, blood, uh, anything like that? Nothing. Uh-huh. 
Do you remember if she made any remark earlier? Anything that had given you some indication as to whether she planned to go out? She had no plans. She was tired from the drive home, had already put cream on her face and her hair up in curlers. But... Yes? Well, she did say something about wanting to go back to Arrowhead the next day. And you're positive she didn't that night? Mr. Dollar, my wife is a very beautiful woman. And an extremely vain woman. She would never leave this house with her hair in such a state. Oh. And even if it were brushed, she wouldn't leave on an overnight trip without taking along a complete wardrobe. All right. What do you think has happened to her? I don't know what to think. If I did, I wouldn't have gone to the police. A few minutes later, I left the lonely old man with his orchids and started toward the stairs. I was about halfway down when I suddenly felt as though I'd forgotten something. Only I was sure I hadn't. Still, something was wrong about this setup. I was trying to figure out what it was when Miss Richards called me. Johnny? Yeah? I'm in here. Better put your jacket on. It'll catch cold. Yeah, well, you better let me worry about that, hun nurse. Helen, Johnny, I'm sorry I was so rude. But I thought you were just another detective who was going to upset Miss Supreme. Well, now, what makes you think I didn't? Because he didn't shout at you. Does he usually shout at detectives? <laughs> he ripped into Lieutenant Steiner yesterday morning. Oh? You know why? Well, the police have a crazy idea that Mrs. Preen's body could be buried somewhere on the grounds or upstairs in the hothouse bed. Well, how do you know that? Well, they've been after him trying to get his permission to dig. If they were really serious about it, they wouldn't need his permission. They'd get a warrant. Johnny... You don't believe Mr. Preen killed his wife, do you? At this moment, I have no reason to. Well, everyone knows what a kind and gentle person he is. What about Mrs. Preen, Helen? Well? I hate her. Why? You, uh, care for him? I don't like that. All right, sorry. He's a fine man, a gentleman. There aren't many left. No, I guess not. He called Mrs. Preen extremely vain... Would you go along with that description? It was made for her. Suppose something had happened to her that night. Suppose, well, something that scarred or burned her face. What do you think she'd do? If she lost her beauty, she'd kill herself. Even if she threw away $25,000 by doing it? I know about that policy, but even if it was doubled, she'd still do it. Why? Because she wouldn't have the nerve to face her friends? <laughs> friends. Bridget Preen never had any friends. But that isn't what happened to her. What did? I don't know, but I'm sure she's dead. Why? I... Why, Helen? Johnny, I... Johnny, please. Tell me. Now, come on. I know you have a good reason for saying that. Now, let's have it. All right. Come over here. I put them away in this drawer. See? Well, what are they? Caps. What? Plastic dental caps. Actresses, models wear them over their teeth to give a perfect appearance. Bridget wouldn't leave a bedroom without them. Where did you get them? I found them on the floor of the garage, two days after she disappeared. Act two of Yours Truly, Johnny Dollar, in just a moment. Democracy. What does it mean to the farmer? How can democracy benefit the farmer better than any other form of government? These are easy questions to answer because the facts are there. Only in a democracy can the farmer get the most aid from his government, own his own land, produce, and equipment, and still earn a standard of living that is comparable to workers in the manufacturing industries. That's because the people in a democracy tell their elected representatives they want it that way. Government subsidy, free enterprise, open markets... And the will to work and better himself enables the farmer in a democracy, such as the United States of America, to produce one of the world's finest diets. Scientific agricultural advancement and democratic government are the reasons why this can happen. This is a part of democracy. But whether it functions in agriculture or some other form of endeavor, democracy gives mankind its finest legacy of freedom. Now act two of yours truly, Johnny Dollar... And the Mad Hatter Matter. Helen, 
Helen, the Supreme's nurse, gave me the set of dental caps that Bridget Preen had used to beautify her teeth. And after telling her not to mention them to anyone, I drove back to my hotel in Los Angeles. Along the way, I racked my brain about whatever it was, something that had bothered me at Preen's home. Then as I passed the newsstand in the hotel lobby, it hit me hard. I had been in almost every downstairs room of Preen's house, and not once had I seen a single picture of the beautiful and vain Bridget. In my room, I was about to call Preen and ask him why when somebody began pounding on my door. Well, Dollar, we seem to have had a hard time making connections, didn't we? I'm Steiner. Oh, how are you, Lieutenant? Fine, just fine. And I think I've got our little case all sewed up. That's so? Yep. Uh, you mind if I rest? No, no, go right ahead. Thank you. Uh, yeah, yeah, see, we've been checking back on Miss Breen's activities for the past few weeks. Uh-huh. Been making quite a few weekend trips, ain't she? I wouldn't know. We figure she found herself a new man, a young man, and took off for parts unknown. What about her clothes? Why didn't she take them? She didn't want to take what old Preen had given her. She's too proud. A little too proud to be true. She had enough things paid for out of her own money to last a good many years. Oh, now, Dollar, you guys let your imagination run away with you. Now, you look at this realistic. Here's a girl in her 20s married to a man who's content to sit home and wait for the golden chariot. And maybe she's content to sit there with him at first... But it ain't normal she should for long. Yeah? You locate anyone who's seen her out with another man? Nope. Try to. That's the thing that's still stuck in my craw. Well, I don't think you will. Why not? Because she was smart. A smart woman. If she had had a boyfriend, and I'm not disagreeing with you on that score, she was very discreet about it. Mr. Dollar. I'm not sure you were aware of it, but each uh... time you mentioned Mrs. Breen, you referred to her in the past tense. Why? <laughs> Oh, no, no, no. Don't tell me I fell for the oldest trick in the business. Come on, Dollar. Stop playing games and answer me. Oh, you should talk about playing games, Steiner. Sorry, but I wanted to throw you off guard. Oh, you did, pal. You did. What did you learn bird-dogging around today, Dollar? Nothing, Steiner. Nothing, Look, really. you either let me have all the information you've received today, or tonight you'll be on your way back to Hartford. Now, which is it? Okay. Okay. Preen's nurse, Miss Richards, found these on the floor of the garage two days after Mrs. Preen disappeared. You know what they are, I suppose. They don't have to be Mrs. Preen. Uh, take a look at this chart, Dollar. We got it from her dentist last week. Now look at the caps. Okay. What are you going to do? What do you think? Arrest Webster Preen for the murder of his wife. <laughs> I told Steiner he could never get an indictment. The teeth caps definitely belonged to Bridget, but they were found in her own garage. She could have dropped them any time during that evening she came home from Arrowhead. And I reminded him of Preen's position in the community, his money, how well he was liked, everything. Hoping I could still stall him long enough for me to try something that had been in the back of my mind since I left Hartford. I opened a copy of Playmate magazine to Bridget's picture. Then I placed a long-distance phone call to New York City. Howard, Mr. Dollar. Okay, thank you, operator. Go ahead, please. Hello? Hello, Mr. Howard. This is Johnny Dollar, insurance investigator. Yes, Dollar? A client of ours has her picture in the current issue of your Playmate magazine. Oh, yes. Yes, lovely, lovely girl, hmm? Um, Mr. Howard, her name is Bridget Preen. Bridget Preen? Or Randall. Bridget Randall. Oh, yes, yes. I know her very well. well where is she? We, uh, aren't sure yet. Mr. Howard, uh... I've got to know when that picture was made and the address of the photographer who shot it. Have you got that? Yes, yes. You just hold on. Now, I remember now I was surprised to see Bridget after all that talk about retiring. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, here it is. The photographer's a new one as far as we're concerned. What's his name? Tracy. Russell Tracy. Address? Box 17. Got it? Box 17. Lake Arrowhead, California. What? Lake Arrowhead. You ought to know where that is. Yeah. Yeah, I do. It took me a little less than two hours to drive up to Lake Arrowhead. When I reached the village, I stopped in at the post office. Yes, sir? What can I do for you? Well, I'm looking for an old friend of mine. He's got a place up here somewhere. Uh, what's his name? Tracy. Russell Tracy. Oh, yeah, sure. Nice little cabin on the lake, about a half a mile down toward the left. You just follow the road. Okay, thanks. Uh, the cabin just before you get to Russell's has a big mailbox out in front with the name Preen on it. Got it? Preen? 
Yeah, I sure have. I was there in five minutes. It was small. Two rooms at the most. A dog came from the direction of Preen's cabin to bark at me. Then went back into the woods again. Russell Tracy? Yeah. Who are you? Name's Dollar, insurance investigator. May I come in? Uh, yeah, yeah, come on in. Thanks. Oh, Mr. Dollar, what's this all about? Bridget Preen. Oh, wait a minute, wait, I'm friend. not... That's a very good picture of her in Playmate. You tell her you sold it? Yes, I did. When? The day you decided to submit it, or after it was sold and too late to stop publication, or not until some other photographers started calling her home to see if she'd come out of retirement. Now, look, Mr. Dollar, I haven't done anything wrong. I didn't say you had. I mean it, Dollar. All I did was take some pictures of her. I, I didn't have any reason to kill her. Who said she was dead? All right, Dollar, sit down. I'll give you the whole story, at least. All I know of it. Okay, go ahead. Bridget liked modeling. She liked it better than anything else, I guess. And when she found out I was a photographer, well, she was over here most of the time. What about the day she disappeared? I'm getting to it. I'd needed some money a few weeks before that. I needed it bad. I, I had a run-in with the law in Texas a couple of years back. I haven't been able to hold on to a good job since. Go on. Well, I had this one shot of her, and I knew it was right, so I sent it in without her knowing about it. When did she find out? Well, like you said, photographers called her house. Her husband answered one of them. You ever meet her husband? Yeah. Yeah, a couple of times when he was up here. He knew you were a photographer? He's been trying hard to get back at me for taking that shot of his wife. How do you mean? There's a dry well out in the back, about 20 yards from the fence line. After he... Killed Bridget. He killed. Yeah. Yeah, because the next morning I... I was out with my dog and we found her face down in a well. I guess he figured the sheriff would find her before I didn't figure I did it. How do I know you didn't? If I had, I wouldn't have dropped her in my own well, would I? Besides, why? All right, she's still there. No, and... No, I, I took her out that same morning. And it's a good thing I did, too. The sheriff and some detectives from L.A. were up here nosing around the next day. Why would Preen want to kill her, Tracy? All right, I don't, know. don't ask why, but Bridget was in love with me. The night she went back to L.A., she was going to tell him. I guess that on top of the picture was just too much for him to take. Dolly, you believe me, don't you? Why didn't you report this to the sheriff? I've got a record, Dollar, and Preen's got more money than he knows what to do with. Besides, there's no proof of what I've, I've just said. It'd be his word against mine, and you know who'd come out on top. Where's your body now? Well, I'll take it. You want? Yeah, bring your camera. My camera? And plenty of film. Don't ask me why I trusted him. I couldn't answer you. Except like he said, he didn't have any reason for killing Bridget. He led me deep into the woods, into a clearing. And there, well, he'd done his best to make her comfortable. We removed the rocks and Bridget was... She was very dead. Expense account item four, five dollars and twenty cents. Assorted phone calls, Arrowhead Springs to Los Angeles. I've been hoping you'd call. Is Mr. Preen there? Yes, right now he's up with his orchid. Have you seen Steiner? Oh, yes, he was here this afternoon. He took Mr. Preen away with him. But in about an hour, Mr. Preen came Now, look, home. Helen, you stay there, but keep out of his way. Do you understand? Oh, Johnny, really, you're talking like he's a criminal. Helen, do just as I say. I'll be there as soon as I can. After seeing that Russell Tracy was safe in the custody of Steiner, I took the freeway out to the San Fernando Valley. It was a little after 9.30 when I pulled into the Preen driveway. The porch lights were on, and Helen opened the door. Johnny... You look awful. You had dinner? No, no, not yet. Well, let me fix you something. No, please, Helen, don't. What's in the envelope? Um, nothing important. Where's Mr. Preen? Where do you suppose? 
upstairs with his orchid. Would you mind if I went right oh, up? Of course not, Tony. You go ahead. When your dinner's ready, I'll call you. Yeah, okay, thanks. Careful of the doorknob. Yeah, I remember. I didn't expect to see you back so soon. Hello, Mr. Free. Ah, uh, didn't dress for us again, I think. You'd uh, better take off your jacket, Mr. Dollar. Uh, afraid I'm not going to stay long enough to bother. Oh, well, now that's too bad. Beauty such as this isn't often seen, Mr. Dollar. I, uh, I disagree with you, sir. What? I think I have something here that's every bit as beautiful as any flower in this hothouse. Well, now, you have aroused my sporting instinct, son, and also my curiosity. What have you... Uh... Here. Oh, no. Oh, no. She was Pretty beautiful, snow, wasn't but... she, Mr. Preen? Here, she's very beautiful. But here... Oh, no. Look at this picture. Uh... Taken just a couple of hours ago. Yeah, what about this one? What about it, Mr. Preen? What do you think of your handiwork? Proud of what you've done, Mr. Preen? No. No, please. No more, please. Why did you do it? I had to. I had to. She was going to leave me. Like everybody else had done. Everything does. She was going and I couldn't let her... I just couldn't let her go. Well, aren't you been right? After he'd killed Bridget, Crean had not been able to face the many photographs of her about the house. Or any pictures of Bridget, as we learned. One photograph had caused a death. The others we took later put Bridget's husband away for the few remaining years of his life. Expense account total, including car rental, hotel incidentals, and transportation back to Hartford... $870.40. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Now here is our star to tell you about next week's story. Next week, a fishing trip that could be very pleasant. Except that one of the fishermen is deaf. Join us, won't you? Yours truly... Johnny Dollar. Johnny Dollar has come to you through the worldwide facilities of the United States Armed Forces Radio and Television Service. <laughs> 